Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Canadian Shield, your trusted source for analysis. My name is Sterling. I'm your host. Got a really interesting video today about the problems that Stephen Gilbo's policies have brought to Canada and how they make no sense when applied to the real world. All right. Now, full disclosure, I... When I shop from Amazon, I use what's called an, Am an Amazon drop point, which is a place that maybe you're familiar with it, but those of you that aren't are, is where the Amazon will send the package to help avoid going through uh, porch pirates and all of the kind of stuff like that where you're you know calling them and say you didn't get it and all that kind of thing. And so they're, they have locations around your city where they will drop the product, the parcel, and then you will just simply go there and pick it up. And it's a, it's a system that I use all the time. I prefer it. I uh, like the fact that I don't have to worry about getting it for the, you know, for the same day. I don't have to stress about it being stolen because it was dropped off. I use the local post office, like my local post office. I like the sauce. I like the process. I find it to be very convenient. And so I utilize it. Now, to tell you a little bit of story about my life, I uh, when I first got here into this unit out of my last relationship, I um, had to buy some my own Tupperware because you know, you know, when you're a man, you don't take those things with you, and so I bought them on Amazon when I first got here, and then I thought, well, let me, I want some more now. Now I need some more Tupperware and uh, the pieces that I want, the sizes, things like that. Some of it, you know, I don't know if it gets lost, if it gets used in something else, because who keeps track of that kind of thing? So I wanted some more and I said, well, let me buy the ones where I bought them before. So they will match because like most people, I think that most people would want Tupperware to match. So I go ahead and I dial up Amazon and I'm looking through it. Now, before I get too far into that, let's remember that Stephen Gilbo's plastic legislation that had been overturned in the federal court that is banned plastic and had, you know, labeled plastic toxic, right? Which, you know, was completely ridiculous to um, think about, you know, like what he should have done was strengthen the, the recycling laws. But anyway, that's a different topic. In this one, I just want to show you how, despite it being overturned, not all the companies got the memo, you know? So here I was looking for this Tupperware and I found one. I said, oh, it looks good. And it's, I, fed, I settled on this one here and I, it's 20% off. It's got, you know, various sizes. It matches the same color. And so I thought, well, uh, let's go ahead and pull the trigger on that. And remember, uh, I get them sent to the drop-off center. Now you can see here on the side where it says this item can't be delivered to Amazon pickup locations because it is classified as hazardous material please choose a different delivery location. Now, truthfully, I have uh, in my life had quite a few hazardous material, like some of the stuff that I've moved, like shipped in my life, uh, you know, you need cars front and back to, to take it directly to one location so that it's put on a thing and there's always a human being that has to travel with it and there's certain fire instructions. And so, I mean, I understand um, dangerous handling of, you know, handling of dangerous materials, but this is Tupperware. But because of that legislation, it's deemed a hazardous material, deemed a hazardous material that is designed for me to put food in. <laughs> I mean, this is, you see the, the issue here, right? Where the, the federal government is just losing their minds. They're just lashing out like people that don't have a clue what they're doing and they are creating problems not only for the manufacturing industry not only for the delivering uh, of this product but for me the, the end consumer i just want to have this product and then forget all about steven gobo while i'm trying to have something to eat you know what i mean and they throw out this blanket legislation because they overreact and they want you to believe that they're doing something for the environment but in reality all you're doing is harming the the end user this isn't this isn't stopping the manufacturer from utilizing plastics. This isn't stopping the uh, landfill from accepting plastics. This does nothing, right? Then I got to thinking. I said, well, there's a lot of plastic that gets sent, sent by. I mean, how many of you have bought something from Amazon and they have those fully plastic airbags in there to just keep the product from moving left or right while, you, while, you, while they ship it to you, right? 
And I thought, well, let me go have a look at, because I, you know, I, I put stuff in the freezer and they don't have any problem selling me freezer bags at the Ziploc, right? And so I went and I had a look on, because I was, I, I wanted to laugh at Stephen Gobo and his overreaction. And what's worse than his overreaction, it, it points to a profound lack of comprehension. This isn't an individual who's strategically attacking a problem and taking it bite by bite by bite. This is a person who is losing their mind. They're freaking out and they're hysterical and they're just lashing out randomly at everything without ever considering that the putting the pen to paper is, is making a, a negative impact on all kinds of things while doing nothing at the same time as doing nothing, accomplishing nothing. Because as you can see, Ziploc can be delivered to the location to what they call the, you know, the pickup location. No problem at all. 75 freezer bags, which are made of plastic, can be sent directly to there. There's no warning for hazardous material. There's no, there's nothing. It's just a, yep, no problem at all. No big deal whatsoever. And I thought to myself, so what's the difference between the Ziploc uh, that's a freezer bag and the Ziploc that might be a plastic bag? I mean, I get that it might not be Ziploc the company, but it's still just a piece of plastic that it's designed to keep my food fresh. How come one is okay and one isn't? And we can put a lot on the end, end result, the end user of the company of Amazon, not necessarily understanding and, or, or mitigating or navigating the legislation appropriately. Or we can say that Stephen Gobro wrote legislation that doesn't make any sense, or both. But with absolute certainty, we can point to you and I seeing this as ridiculous. Right. I mean, I can, I can't get Tupperware sent to the one location. I got to have what I got to have this, you know, dangerous material handling certificate <laughs> to pick it up at the door from the, the courier company, but the Ziploc can go right to my storage location, like my drop off center, as they call it, whatever the words are. And so I, I thought to myself, nah, <laughs> I said, so let me see what else is out there that may be you know, considered hazardous that I'm not aware of, right? Because I like information. So I started thinking about recycling. I started thinking about all the things that, you know, we recycle and how we recycle it. And, and of course, the one thing that we recycle separately is batteries, right? There's a, always a special location for the batteries. So I said, let me go over and have a look at the batteries. And I just picked the random one. So this isn't necessarily a, a slam on this company. Again, I, I don't believe that it's the company in any way, shape or form. I think that it's the legislation. I think that it's a company overreacting based on the way that the Canadian government said to them that this is the, the rule for all of this product now, right? Like they just sent the, a big packet of information and nobody's keeping up because can't, how many products can they actually be keeping track of on a day-to-day -day basis? But I would also point out that not only are these batteries okay to drop off at the drop-off location and there's no warning for them to be delivered as hazardous material, they are also surrounded in plastic, right? When you, you know, when you go to the store and you buy batteries, <laughs> they have a plastic sleeve that's actually been, you know, air drawn around them to design to hold them in whatever shape or form that they happen to be in. And they come in all shapes and sizes. So we can see that the legislation is having an impact without making any sense right i mean it doesn't it does, there's no consistency in that there's no there's no logic to that and i can understand that you might be trying to keep things out of the landfill but and okay i respect that right i mean there are there are better ways to handle plastic as garbage than canada does right now i mean the europeans do a much better job of handling their plastic refuse than canada does of course the liberal government is not putting any money or any um any time or effort into utilizing those we're just you know throwing out no more plastic in canada like somehow that's going to be a very uh, achievable goal when manufacturers use plastic at, at great length for various reasons what i want to draw to your attention is not only the foolishness of stephen gobo and justin trudeau's legislation but their lack of comprehension of the actual problems that are going on around me because of Ziploc bag, how, how many of you use a Ziploc bag over and over and over again when you pull your food out of the freezer and how many of you reutilize the Tupperware that you take to, for your lunch or whatever it is over and over again. So one of them has a much less probability of ending up in the landfill, whereas the other one has a strong possibility of ending up in the landfill. And how many of you are going to keep the little sleeve that your batteries came in or just going to fire it into the plastic garbage bag that you use? Now, I understand that Stephen Gabo has a one track mind that he's, you know, got a pinpoint and, and, you know, tunnel vision on his 
carbon, 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 carbon. But that's not to say that you and I as Canadians shouldn't be paying attention to what they're, what they're doing. It's not to say that you and I as Canadians shouldn't be understanding that there are, there are things in the environment that we can be tackling, that we can be cleaning up, that we can be handling, and that we can be marketing toward the rest of the world. Because we might not be able to convince China and India to stop burning stuff, but we can absolutely convince them to stop throwing their garbage around. I can assure you of that. I can assure you that if we have the ways to handle and and dismantle this plastic, then the other companies will, other countries will buy that technology, and then we can start to make inroads. But you can't explain that to the Trudeau government, to the Liberals, to Stephen Gilbo, because they they have blinders on. They just have this one track mind. They don't care about facts. They don't care about anything other than what they care about. And this is a perfect example of that. I mean, you can't get Tupperware delivered because it's a hazardous material, but I can get Ziplocs delivered. <laughs> I mean, make that make sense for me, man. Just, just make it make sense, Mr. Gilbo, because I don't, I don't see how it makes any sense at all. I don't believe that it makes any sense to you or to anyone. And I think that if you were to have a strong, hard look at the way that you handle this problem, you would realize you're not qualified. And if you really want to do something for the environment, if you really want to do something, you should just resign and get out of the way and let someone who is trained and knowledgeable in these fields to come in and have a, a stronger look at it. You know, just like the way you got um, Christy Freeland out of the way and you brought in an expert. I suppose that's a different video. All right, I'm going to wrap here. I want to thank you all for listening. I'll talk to you next time.